first I'm going to come give us a metaphysical foundation to come at it with, you know, because you know how the Course is, I'm ever upset for the reason I think. I'm upset because I s see something that's not there, I see only the past. And then Jesus goes on to say, you know, what I see is a form of vengeance. Uh, just to perceive a fragmented perceptual world entails so much rage. It's because it's the ego that's perceiving the fragmented perceptual world. And that's what he means by what I see as a form of vengeance. If you see flowers and trees and animals and snow and mountains and everything, and your mind actually thinks of it that way as your eyes are moving around, then that applies to that lesson, what I see is a form of vengeance. Most people don't think of snow and flowers and animal faces with their little eyes and their little ears, bunny rabbit ears, as a form of vengeance, but I'll try to explain that it is a form of vengeance. And there's also another beautiful teaching in the Course that says, um, nothing so blinding as perception of form. The sight of form means that understanding has been obscured. What he's saying in there is, that's why he's using all this, nothing I see means anything, I do not understand anything I see, is because this veil is, is part of the rage, is part of the vengeance, and it's been accustomed. I've grown accustomed to your face, it almost makes the day begin. You know, a custom, the familiar is, is now, it's not seen as a form of vengeance. It's seen as just the way things are now. And so, when you start to go on this spiritual journey, there will, you will perceive things, in this case leaders, telling you to do something, maybe seeming to be upset even, or insisting on certain things and so on and so forth. And there is a grievance that is the ego, that's producing the entire scenario, the entire screen is all coming about from, from this grievance. And so, when you begin to take that in, and you begin to start to understand, in no situation do I perceive my own best interest, you you can see that there is going to be a rage that's going to come up, and has to come up, for healing. And this whole journey is, is really about allowing that to come up. So, this is the context in which it's coming up. And it's, it's the context in which you're allowing it to come up. And it's, it's oftentimes very, very intense. And when there's a context of, of following, it's, it's a context of, um, let me give you a, a better context for the whole thing. Even though I didn't have a teacher or guru or anything that other than the Holy Spirit and Jesus inside myself, it didn't stop me from reading a lot. So I read a lot about spirituality. I was an avid reader. And I wanted to read, even though I myself hadn't been in spiritual communities, I thought, I can learn a lot from books, from those who've been in communities and those who've gone through whatever they went through. Like Jesus says, you can learn from my experiences and you can learn from your brothers and sisters. Don't think that you have to go through the school of hard knocks. So I, would, I went through a lot of books and absorbed like a sponge. And when I was going through a lot of these spiritual books, I came across what they called the crazy wisdom teachers. Has anybody ever heard that term before? I read a lot about the crazy wisdom teachers because there's been a lot of gurus and a lot of teachers on the planet for a lot of centuries. And the crazy wisdom teachers used to do some crazy stuff, I mean really crazy stuff, and, and put the devotees under the guise of following the teacher through amazingly crazy stuff. I mean like, 
having them stand up on a table in front of everybody and take all their clothes off and dance naked and oh boy did I read about the crazy wisdom teachers and when I was reading it it was just like wow that's bizarre because I was always like WWJD what would Jesus do would Jesus have ever done some of those kind of tricks he had too much presence too much love too much respect you know to ever get into this stuff like I'm the guru and you're the devotee just say yes do whatever I say I would read all about this crazy stuff and it's it's all documented if you ever want to have some fun go to Google look up the crazy wisdom teachers and look up all the stuff if you want to read and I mean it's bizarre and all under the name of just follow me you know do dare not in fact some of the other devotees would be like when they would see somebody up there dancing naked on the table they would be like is this is this right is this but they all it was the group think kind of thing like everybody you always follow what the guru says and you never question the guru so they'd all be there kind of like you know it's like that old tale about you know the the king has no clothes on till finally the little boy goes he doesn't have any clothes on and they're like Shh, don't you know don't say that so I feel blessed because I read so much about the crazy wisdom teachers that I felt like my discernment my BS detector <laughs> got really sharp really quick because I'm like whoa thank God I'm glad glad the spirit took me on a journey through the crazy wisdom teachers because I thought if I ever go to any place and they start pulling this stuff on me I am out of there so fast <laughs> they're, they're not going to even have to say goodbye because it's not worth it you know I've, I've seen behind that scam it can't live up to WWJD you know and if it can't live up to WWJD I don't care about it I've got no interest in it so what that did for me was I thought to myself wow if I'm ever involved in a spiritual community you know I'm gonna make sure for myself and for everyone involved that there's going to be a sense of integrity that there's going to be a true sense of exposure and like the little boy that says the king doesn't have clothes on and and so there's an openness so that people can can say that and, and I still it still happens to me um, it still happens to me where where somebody will feel like they're starting to feel a little bit crazy like a little crazy wisdom coming on and they this is not kind of a, a community where we have these echelons where you, you have to always go through the chains I'll, I'll tell people come call me up on the phone on your cell phone if it's if it starts to get like you really start to go wait a minute this is weird stuff going on then just call me up and let's we'll join together and we'll go right to the root of it whatever it is and not try to play these games of you know somebody knows something and somebody has something over somebody else and all this stuff because what's the goal here the goal is teaching perfect equality you know we're still we can use the elder brother approach but it's got to we want to come to a feeling that we're all equal and we're all one and there's true humbleness and humility in that feeling a true reverence actually in that state so that's why um, when there's people that are put like overseers or stewards or whatever and they're guiding and the guidance is basically task oriented it's it's around a task or it's around something that a direction or whatever that's I would say most of the time that's extremely appropriate uh, it has nothing to do with crazy wisdom teaching because I've already seen crazy wisdom so if somebody says you know a lot of it's around attentiveness and and it is well should be around attentiveness the mind is so untrained that it's putting itself in a context where it can use tasks and things projects to gain attentiveness this isn't like some Buddhist monastery where you have to sit and meditate and when just when you start to doze off you get whacked by a stick that happens I don't even know if that's crazy wisdom in the sense that if people are really going for attention <laughs> I've heard some of the Vipassana things and you know it's you go through some really strong
strong resistances when you're going to break through. And there's some pretty rigid training systems uh, that, that are out there, so to speak. And, and when you subject yourself to them, you're saying, please help me discipline my mind. Help me bring me to attention. Some of it would seem extreme by some, but, but I know the context of it. So when I f have a feeling what you're describing is you're describing some of the, your day-to-day -day experiences here at the monastery, and it can involve instructions like, like Morpheus, I will guide you, but you must do exactly as I say. There are instructions that involve your tasks, your movements, the things that you're doing, that you're not doing. It can involve some instructions on, on working with people and approaching people and some suggestions, some reminders, some strong reminders some frequent strong reminders, and all of that is just a witness to what you want in your heart, which is to break through that anger, you know, to break through that resistance, knowing deep down I'm never upset for the reason I think. It, there's a much, like the first night we did our gathering last night, I was talking about that context, would you rather be right or happy? Not as a simple little cliche, but I went into great depth of be right about what. And I took like a good 20, 30 minutes to go into great depth about what that is. And it's the same with this anger that you feel. You know, it's, it, it does involve a misperception. And anger is never justified. And you could say that, that when you start feeling angry, the ego immediately wants you to justify it. Look at the screen. Did you see the way they looked at me? Did you see the way they said what they said? Or, you know, it's always going to zoom in on a target or a behavior of what somebody said, what they did, what they didn't do that they should have done. Aha! You know, it's going to zoom in on the form right away to project out the source of the anger. But the source of the anger isn't in the form. It's, it's, there's a rage that's tied to all of perception. And just seeing a fragmented world is a form of vengeance. What I see is a form of vengeance. It's one of those early workbook lessons where Jesus is like, he's going to make a direct cause and effect connection between the distorted way that you're looking and the, the upset that you feel. There's a direct connection between the distortion and the upset. But the cause isn't in the form, ever. Never. There's never a cause in the form. So. Because I have this metaphysical context, because I've gone through this practice and purification myself for years, and because I still remember the crazy wisdom, the stuff like that, I know that, that you aren't going through crazy wisdom here. Because I wouldn't settle for it. If I heard one example of crazy wisdom going on here at the monastery, I would make sure I would, I would address it immediately. And if I had to chop it off <laughs> or chop whatever needed to be chopped off, I would do that. Because I know that you've dedicated your life to this. You you've, are giving everything you've got to this. This is your life's calling. This isn't a passing fancy, something you're going to dabble. Most of the time, spiritual dabblers don't hang around me very much. They're gone within a couple days or a couple hours sometimes, or minutes, because, because they can't handle it. It's like uh, Jack Nicholson, you can't handle the truth. It's actually, that's actually what it is. You know, he was saying it more in the context of military. You know, he, he had so much unconscious stuff that his face was red when he said it to Tom Cruise. <laughs> But he was, he was his own, he couldn't handle the truth. <laughs> and his face was red because of it. But dabblers don't, don't hang around the presence that I am because it doesn't go together very well. In fact, it, it just, pssst, like, like one of those bug zappers, you know, pssst, pssst. <laughs> it just it doesn't, doesn't last, the bug doesn't last very long. And I, and I tell you, I'm really sincere about that. I, if, if there was any hint, of crazy wisdom going on with anything 
wherever we have our centers, Hawaii or Camas or here, this and this, you can bet I would get wind of it because, you know, people, no private thoughts and no people pleasing. If somebody made somebody stand up on a table naked or do some, one of the crazy wisdom maneuvers, oh, you bet it would get back to me. It would get back to me quick. And then we would, we would look at, we would address it immediately with what, what was, what's the perception, what are the thoughts. Not that the behaviors are the problem, but, but what the motivation, what was, what's the motivation behind crazy wisdom. It's, it's craziness, it's, <laughs> that's the motivation. And for most people, there's something within them that, that tells them when something is, gets to the point of being bizarre, where they just say, I don't really need this. I can walk away from this. But I don't feel with you, that's, that's not where it's coming from. The, the ones that are saying what they're saying to you and asking something from you, or maybe even pointing something out. The other thing for me about pointing something out is I learned this from Jesus way back many years ago, and what he taught me was it all, correction only comes about through invitation. And he drilled that into me, that, that it's no business of mine to correct anybody on the planet unless they invite it. And that he, he even says that in the, the text, you know, do not correct a brother because he is the Christ. And the only way that correction comes in, even in terms of teaching learning, is if there's an invitation. So when I first had my, I mean, I didn't try to have students, I just was going around being happy back in the early 1990s, and then people showed up, I am your student, I am your student, I am your student. So I was like, okay, I guess this is the teacher manual thing happening. And then it started to happen, and I would patiently wait with them, wait, 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 wait. I could wait weeks or months or years until they individually came up to me and said, help me. Would you point out things? If you see going on in my life or my mind, they would give me an invitation and I would wait patiently and I would not correct anything with them until I was given the invitation. And coming to this community, you know, you understand as you are here, the workings of it. And what the way out of that rage and that anger is to cultivate that invitation within yourself to say to, your, to the Holy Spirit, to your brothers and sisters, help me. That's the reason why you're here is, is mirroring. And you can help me get into my unconscious blocks faster than if I tried to go out and just sit and meditate in the teepee. It's much, much faster. So you, then you have a sense of gratitude when those things happen. You, the ego is going to want to say, there's something wrong with them, and there, and there, and there, and that's wrong, wrong, wrong. And really, it's all, you can start to tap into the gratitude, that attitude of gratitude, because they're actually showing you what needs to be released and forgiven in the most direct way possible. And that'll pop you out of it. You know, that'll pop you out of, of the anger. So I'm coming at it from both a, a very practical metaphysical way and I just bring in the crazy wisdom example because you know there's no crazy wisdom going on around here and if you think there is it might be good to go read a little bit about the crazy wisdom teachers and then you probably have a smile on your face like okay <laughs> it's just my stuff I'm dealing with it's not you know these bizarre kind of things that, that really don't have anything to do with authentic spirituality.